Hello guys, it's Pozi here and I'm still trying to figure out how caching works in Next.js. So I've made up another hypothetical situation here. So take a look at uh, this component. So our page component here has two components. So it has the random number component and then the random number API component. So the random number component uses a data fetching method by just calling an async function. So this could be a function that accesses the database for example, but for now it's just returning a random number between 0 and 100. So we are calling that data fetching function inside our async component component here and then displaying it. Now the second component is the random number API component. So this component actually calls a remote API for the data. It sends a fetch request to this API and then returns the data and then we call it in the component. So let's take a second to observe how they behave in the browser window here. So if we refresh the page, notice that uh, the value for the random number API at the bottom here doesn't change, but the value for the random number component at the top changes. So every time you refresh, you're getting a new random number. So this means that uh, Next.js is caching uh, data for the fetch API here at the bottom, but not for the normal data fetching method here, right? Well, you might think that, but you are wrong. Both of these values are statically generated, so they are cached by default. So ideally, this value here at the top should not change on refresh. Now, this is an illusion that works only on the dev environment. So we have a dev server running. But on a production environment, we'll get the true picture of what should be displayed here. So let's do it. So let's exit our dev environment and then run the build by npm run build. And then once the build is complete, we start the production server by npm start. So if we refresh our browser window, we should get fixed values. So every time we refresh, the values are no longer changing. So let's go back to the dev uh, server so that I can go through the problem that I want to highlight in this video. So let's say for this uh, page component here, we want the data for these values to be dynamic and not cached. So it's a random number. We want the random number to be generated every time the user refreshes the page and not generated on the server. So the easiest way to make sure that uh, this page is dynamic is to export a constant in this page component here. So the constant is, so export const uh, dynamic and then the value should be false dynamic. So next JS will look for this and if the value is false dynamic, then it will change the page to a dynamic instead of a statically generated page. So if we save this and uh, refresh the page, you'll now notice that both values will change after each refresh. So that's an easy and quick solution, right? So what if we don't want uh, to turn the whole page into a dynamic page? So with this property here, every single component that is under this page will be turned to a dynamic component. But in the real world, you only want to turn specific parts of your app to be dynamic and then other parts to be statically generated. So let's get rid of this property here and then start from step one again. So let's start with the most uh, direct part. That is the component that is calling the fetch API. So I think I mentioned this in another video, but this fetch API is uh, the web API implementation of fetch but Next.js has added uh, more functionalities on top of it. None of the biggest functionalities they have implemented is the ability to cache requests. So by default, all requests are cached. That's why when you refresh the page, the value doesn't change. And even if you look at the request uh, logs in the console here, if we refresh the page, you can see that uh, we have hit the cache. So making this dynamic is easy. We just need to turn off the caching. So that involves adding another property to the fetch function here called cache. So the cache property can be a bunch of values, but if you want to disable caching, we either use the no cache or the no store property. So let's go with the no cache property, right? So let's save this. So with this, every time we refresh the page, we'll be getting a new value. So the cache will be skipped. But this introduces another problem that is not immediately visible. So remember we said that uh, this data is cached by default, but in development, you can see that it changes. So you have the wrong view on how this operates. So ideally, this should be the one that is changing constantly, but this should be cached, right? Okay, so let's test this hypothesis. So let's uh, stop the server and then rerun our build. So npm run build. And then uh, once that is done, we run npm start. So let's go ahead and refresh and see the behavior. So it looks like uh, the value for the API here is now changing on every request. But also notice that the value for the random number component here is also changing. But we have 
haven't uh, done anything uh, to block caching for this component. So it's like the random number API component. When we disable caching for the fetch API used here, it's also disabling caching for other components. So this is another thing that I came to realize with the Next.js caching stuff. If you disable caching for one of the components, like we have done for this fetch API here, it automatically turns the page component into a dynamic component. So we are basically doing the same thing we did by adding the force dynamic uh, property at the start of uh, this video. So you don't need to add this property to turn the whole page to be a dynamic uh, page. You just have to do something inside uh, any of the children of the page component that forces the whole page to be dynamic. So how do we fix this? How do we make sure that uh, this component here that doesn't uh, use the fetch API still remains cached? Well, there's one method that I learned we can do this by using the unstable cache API. So this is our data fetching function, right? So what we can do is say, for example, let's turn this into an arrow function first. So this is an arrow function. And then uh, wrap this function with the unstable cache function from next cache utility. So like that. So this is an async function. So your data fetching function will be inside this function. So with this, next we'll cache the result of uh, calling this function by default. So let's confirm that this works. So let's save this and then go through the process of rebuilding our app again so that we can test it in production. So npm run build and then once it's done, we start the app again. So if we refresh the page, we should now get our caching back for that component. So you can see that the value for the fetch API is changing and then for the non-fetch API, it is now fixed because now it is under the unstable cache. So that fixed is the problem so now let's turn this uh, the other way so what if we want uh, the data for the random number component to be dynamic but the data for the random number api to be static so that means for the random number api we remove our no cache configuration here so that it's cached by default like that but uh, for the random number component here we remove any caching that we have added to it so let's get it back to how it was previously so like that so each of these files is now cached by default. So we want uh, this to remain cached and we want uh, this to be dynamic. So there's another function I want to introduce you to that is called unstable no store. So inside our function component here, we can call the unstable no store function just like that. And what this function does is it will disable caching for this component. So this is equivalent to adding the no store cache property to the fetch API. So let's take a look at how these functions in production. So again, let's go through the whole process again of uh, running the build and then running our production server. So let's refresh the page and see what happens. So you can see the values have changed. Refresh again, values are changing. So you can see the value of the random number component here is no longer cached. It's changing every time you refresh. But now we have introduced the same problem that we had introduced by turning off caching for the fetch API. So also the function component that uses the fetch API has now disabled caching. So we have haven't done anything to this function so caching is enabled by default but because again we enabled caching for this other component the page automatically became a dynamic component so we are back to where we started so how do we fix this so the component that is the problem is the random number api component here so to make sure that this data is cached we have to force it to cache it so for the cache option we need to pass in the force cache property so this forces caching for this route. So this should fix the problem that you're having here. Again, let's confirm that it works. We can't trust the dev server to handle this properly. So we have again to build our app and then start our app afresh. So with that, let's refresh the page and observe the changes. So if you refresh the page, you can now notice that now the fetch response is fixed. So it is 11 no matter how many times you refresh. But the other component that we disabled caching for, the random number component is now dynamic and changes every time you refresh. So that is how uh, both of these functions work. So we have gone through the unstable no store function, the unstable cache function, and also the force cache property. So you might have also noticed that the functions are prefixed with unstable. So that means that these functions are not ready for production, but they can be very helpful in these specific cases where we are trying to achieve uh, what you are trying to do. So if you guys have any ideas on how to do this better, I would really appreciate it in the comments below. But that is all I have for this video. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.